Hello everyone, I'm Chris Morrow. This is my talk on debugging JavaScript from zero to Heisenberg. So the purpose of this talk is for both beginner level JavaScript developers, those that are very brand new, uh, as well as the Heisenbergs, the, the advanced JavaScript developers. Maybe you've been doing it for a number of years. So hopefully you'll have take home whether you're beginner or advanced. Again, my name is Chris Morrow. I'm a senior UI developer. I work at a company called Soltech. I've been doing web development for over 15 years and uh, just, you know, wanted to share what I've learned throughout the years, some things that have gotten me in trouble, some gotchas to avoid, and uh, just looking forward to sharing that with everyone. I'm on Twitter. There's my Twitter handle if anybody wants to reach out, if you have any follow up questions. I'd be glad to. To answer. So as I said earlier, this talk is for both beginners. That's the Walter Whites new to the game, not necessarily uh, well versed in debugging JavaScript or even uh, knowing where to start. And also the Heisenbergs out there, those that have been doing JavaScript development for for many years. So the plan today is to show you JavaScript best practices throughout um, some definite do's and don'ts I'm gonna show breakpoints and again everything that I show you today is gonna be in Chrome uh, debugging tools Chrome developer tools but you could definitely do that in Firefox Safari Internet Explorer if you wish uh, though not recommended so again today I'm using Chrome but again you this is most of everything I'm going to show you uh, the UI is a little bit different on different debugging tools but you can do these uh, same functions on any uh, browser that's available so I'll show breakpoints I'll show watches explain what those are using the console a number of different ways describe what a call stack is and how to use it and how it can help you as well as I'll share some custom tools that uh, one tool that I've created just as an example uh, ways that you can uh, debug your code and help uh, just have a sanity check to check for memory leaks running your app uh, you know more intensely uh, changing some configurations to help you um, test your app faster as well as I'll share some pre debugging tools that'll help you write better code So one of the common problems in JavaScript is there are too many cooks in the kitchen. What I mean by that is there are global variables declared and, and the best practice is to avoid global variables. Let me show you what I mean. Check out this line of code, var now equals new date. We've, we've created this code, this is, this is your code or our code, uh, var now equals date we come down here later we load a library that has some nice date functions that we might need and if this date library dot js file declares var now in any different way but if var now is declared within that library on the global scope it will overwrite our variable var now so the way to avoid that from happening, your variable is getting destroyed by some other code. It could even be your own code that you've forgotten that you've declared var now on the root. Is you want to avoid those global variables by wrapping it in a function. If you wrap your code in a function, this is an anonymous function here, uh, also known as a closure function. You wrap your variable var now in this function. It's now protected any code outside of this function will not overwrite these local variables as they're called so that's a quick way to protect your code and just lock it down put it in a put it in a function and now it's protected so why do people hate JavaScript why do hate people why do people hate debugging JavaScript well here's a few ways a few reasons why Variables are in global in scope, as we just saw. Uh, many other languages, if you do a if or a conditional statement, uh, it will protect the variables. But in JavaScript, as I just showed you, the only way to protect a variable and to give it its own scope is to put it inside of a function. All right, another problem that many people have with JavaScript is 
it doesn't require strong typing and let me show you what that means in most other languages when you declare a variable you would say var my string and you would actually have to type that variable usually with a colon and then you would actually declare the type after the variable name or the object name and then you would say equals this is a string but in JavaScript you don't have to do that so this parameter this typing uh, does not exist when you declare a variable or an object so many people have a problem with that because you can actually say var my string equals 10 and now it actually is typed as a number but you haven't specifically declared that it's type number so that is uh, that it the fact that it doesn't require strong typing cross-browser compatibility Internet Explorer a lot of issues there many other browsers that we have to support so other languages you know they just work they compile down and they work on on anything especially server-side code um, but cross-browser issues uh, we have to deal with with JavaScript as well as cross-device also there's no per se built-in classes you can't say this is you know new class uh, although you do you can um, create classes in JavaScript just different methods of doing it performing it so is debugging got you stressed maybe it does we're gonna hopefully solve that problem in just a moment by showing you some ways to to debug more easily so let's discuss breakpoints breakpoints are the quickest easy way to navigate your code and we're gonna discuss many different ways of navigating your code but there are standard breakpoints and there are also conditional breakpoints. Let's go ahead and start by looking at standard breakpoints first. So before I get into breakpoints, I want to show you one thing to bring up your tools, at least in, in Chrome. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to go to the top right in this menu here and scroll all the way down to more tools and then choose developer tools and you see there's a shortcut I always use the shortcut but I wanted to show you the the menu how to get to it through the menu first alright I'm going to click that it now brings up my console potentially your console may start off on the elements tab as is highlighted here and notice it also shows you what styles might be on an element that you have selected as I, as I choose different elements here within the elements tab it'll show me styles on the right but for debugging and setting our breakpoints we need to navigate to the sources tab now that I'm in the sources tab I can find the JavaScript file that I want to debug that is going to be in my JS folder and I have one breakpoints.js here that we can run through so looking at my code and for now I'm not gonna we're gonna talk about these panels a little bit later but for now I'm gonna get those out of the way and I can get rid of that by clicking this arrow um, it will close that debugging panel alright so I have some uh, a closer as we've showed before a function that will execute and it'll run through my code top to bottom as JavaScript does and it'll step into here it'll declare this variable my number equals 181 it'll go through all of the functions but on functions they won't actually get executed until they're called so it'll call var my array then the code will come all the way down skip all of these functions so it'll come down and hit this first function and then we'll jump back up to here and we'll actually hit this line my first function and jump in here and execute the code so to see that just to confirm that that's the way our code is working just want to make sure that things are running in order I'm gonna set a breakpoint on var my array I've already set one in first function and then I'm gonna go down here at the very bottom uh, this line 31 and it is going to hit this right before it makes that first function call and again, as you've already seen, to create a breakpoint, all you need to do is click the left side of the gutter where the line numbers are. 
Now that I've set these breakpoints, I can re come up here and reload my page. And notice that it did execute from the top. It stopped at my array. My array is undefined until it passes that line of code. If I hit the continue button, that's this uh, right now in the blue since we're running our code. If I hit the play button, it will just continue to execute our code until it hits the next breakpoint. Notice now it jumped all the way down to first function here. And now, as we've said before, oh, we've lost our breakpoint. Sometimes the debugger does wig out, but in general, it works pretty seamlessly. Now I've recreated that breakpoint here in the first function. So it hasn't yet called first function. It's going to call it, and then it should jump into this breakpoint on line 12. And it did. So as I hit play, it continued to execute the code, and it went to this next breakpoint. If I hit play again, I don't have any more breakpoints. It should just run through all my code, which it did, and now we're out of it. Now, notice on the right on this panel now that we have breakpoints, it automatically opened the debugging panel and lists each breakpoint that I have. It's a quick way to see what uh, breakpoints you have. You can add, uh, you can remove the breakpoints here. You can also just deactivate them if I uncheck breakpoint on line 8 it will not hit that breakpoint now you can see that the breakpoint is deactivated uh, with this like low opacity kind of see-through and now I've activated again so it's one way to, to quickly deactivate breakpoints so what I want to do is I want to show you now a the other breakpoint which is a conditional breakpoint we will go back to our code here so I want to get rid of all the breakpoints. I don't want to just deactivate them. I want to get rid of all of them. A quick way to do that in Chrome DevTools is to right click within the breakpoints panel. You can see I can remove one breakpoint or remove all. I can also just deactivate all or disable all. But I'm going to remove all. So now I have no breakpoints in my lines, no arrows to the left. So now I'm going to set a conditional breakpoint, and how to do that is you just set a regular breakpoint first, and then if I right click that existing breakpoint, I choose Edit Breakpoint. Now that I'm editing that breakpoint, it actually gives me uh, an actual field that I can fill in, and, and as it says there, it will stop only if this expression is true. So if I'm in my code, say I have a variable, I want to make sure, hey, if it's not, if it's undefined or if my array doesn't have any, any values like Hank, Jesse, or Walter, then I want it to break here. In this case, I want to say, hey, my number should equal 0, um, or no, my number should equal 181 as we see before, and so I want it to stop there only if it equals, only if it equals 181. So my number equals 181, and then I just hit return or enter. Notice now the breakpoint is orange, and that lets you know that it's a conditional breakpoint. If I refresh my page, notice it stops. Can hover over it. Now if I right click, I'm going to edit this breakpoint just to show you. Here we stopped, but let's say 182. Hey, close enough. It should stop, right? No, wrong. If it's uh, if it's not true, it's not going to stop. So now I'm changing my number equals 182. It stops. I'm going to run through my code first. And once I refresh the page, up, oh, it didn't stop. Refresh the page again, as I showed you, it does not stop. If I change it back, edit the breakpoint, back to 181, hit return, refresh the page, it stops. So again, that's a quick way to evaluate if an expression is true, I want you to break only in that condition. And that's a conditional breakpoint. Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit deeper into navigating the code. Uh, in the breakpoints example, I showed you how to continue through your code by just hitting the play button, which is like a play pause of your code. And it just continues through your code until it encounters a breakpoint. There's also the step over. Uh, looks like this icon uh, over the little dot there, jumping over something. 
and that steps through each line of code um, just line by line one by one goes to the very next line of executable code step into is just like step over and I'll, I'll show this in just a moment except if it encounters a function call it will jump into that function that's being called and then last is step out if you're inside of a function inside some other scope if you want to jump out of that function go back to your uh, parent level of code that's getting executed then you click step out and you'll just skip through the rest of that function um, code being executed alright so I'm gonna go back through step over step into and step out let's go back to the breakpoint sample alright and we know that we're going to call first function here at the bottom I'm gonna set one breakpoint just so we can stop our code and then as I step through it actually let's go ahead and set the breakpoint at the very beginning then we can just see line by line what happens with the code so I stop at my number it hasn't been declared it's undefined I'm gonna use the step over and notice that it jumps to the very next line of executable code the next thing that's declared a variable in this case total functions called and then if I step over again it goes to the very next line of executable code step over again uh, functions aren't called and uh, they're not executed unless they're called so I went to the very next level of executed code from var my array this is commented out here we'll learn about console log later uh, and then it goes to the first function call as I step over again notice it, it didn't hit any of these functions the first function the second function third fourth it didn't hit any of those functions because I stepped over every call I'm just I'm just in this scope I'm skipping through all the lines of code and then I finish and now my codes run completed now let's do that same thing using step into I'm gonna refresh the page at the same breakpoint so step into much like step over it'll continue to go line by line but when it hits a, f a function call in this case first function and I click step into it's actually going to go into that function now we're inside first function as I continue to click step into it goes to the next line of code as it encounters second function call it jumps into that function call so step into is much like step over if you really want to traverse all of your code you want to use step into and that'll just continue to take you down the chain how many ever function calls you may make jump into third function and then the fourth function executes and then we jump out of each of those functions and then at the very end much like before and we're done alright so that is step into step out I'm going to go back through and use the same method, step into. I'm going to step into the first function. Notice I'm going to click step out in this case. Step out, and it jumped out of that, sec that first function call. Went ahead and went back to the parent scope in that function, and then it went to the very end there, and then the code is run. So a quick way to step into functions and then step out. All right, another best practices. Um, first, don't use meth. It's very bad for you. Don't do it. It's it's just not uh, not a very good thing at all. Don't even try it. Same thing, equally bad. And speaking of equals, do not use the double equals or the uh, explanation point equals, which is inequality. Both of these evaluate equality or inequality, but they do not check type. So JavaScript does have typing uh, inference, and it can figure out what type object you have. But you have to use the triple equals and the exclamation point double equals for the inequality. 
So just plain thing, uh, when you're evaluating equality, always use the triple equals. It's another, it's another equals. I know it's that, that much work, but that's one of the idiosyncrasies of JavaScript just to never use the double equals. Only use the triple equals for equality and the uh, explanation double equals for inequality. And one of those, uh, that practice is documented in this book, JavaScript, The Good Parts, by Douglas Crockford. Uh, if you haven't seen any of his videos online or any of his content, definitely check it out. This book is a great starter, uh, just showing all the things that are good and bad about JavaScript, and he focuses on the things to definitely use and things not to use that will get you into trouble. So definitely pick up this book if you don't already have it. Uh, I make no commission. I'm not giving you any links. It's just great content, so go ahead and grab that. All right, now let's talk about watches. So you can add a watch multiple ways. First is selecting uh, and right-clicking in the Sources panel. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so... I'll open the watches JavaScript and notice here on the right panel there is a watch expressions panel I'm gonna expand that so a watch is basically anything that you want to watch to you know read that's like the teacher's answer or the the student that doesn't know the right answer but uh, you are really just observing any expression that you want in this case, I'm going to observe an actual variable that is in this uh, in this code. It's my array. So, as I said before, you can select a, a variable or an expression, and then right-click, and then go up to the very top of the menu and choose Add to Watch. Notice now. I have the watch expression but it says it's not available the reason is this code is already run and I'm not inside of this function currently but if I go ahead and set a breakpoint and rerun that code I'm now in this function it notices that there is my array but it's undefined this this line of code had has not been run yet so just for ease of use to see what's going on I'm gonna make a breakpoint inside first function and go ahead and run my code now that I'm in first function we've already hit this line of code my array has been declared so you can see I can expand this and actually see the list of items in the array Hank Jesse Walter Hank Jesse Walter as I continue to run my code, and I'm going to use the step into that we used earlier, which will go through each function and line by line, I'll jump to this next line of code, my array.push. I'm going to add Walter White Jr. to the array, and I'm going to continue to step into, which will just go to the next line of code, and then now Walter White Jr. has been added to the array. As I continue to run through my code, again stepping into the second function uh, Skylar is about to be added to the JavaScript as I jump again you'll see that now she's been updated added to the array alright so I think you get the point there I'm not gonna show any more on on that that is an, a watch expression and you're just evaluating any uh, expression that you want for example I have my array that's something that was kind of in my sources panel something obvious but what if I want to evaluate what what is the length of my array well that's another way to add a watch and I'm going to show you that with clicking the plus on the watch expressions and then I'm also just for time's sake gonna go ahead and also show you you can right click inside the watch expressions panel to do it as well to add a watch so first the plus pretty easy click the plus sign again let me show you that oh. Let me expand the watch expressions. All right, I click the plus. It gives me a, a field, much like the conditional breakpoint gives you. I'm going to type my array. It actually has IntelliSense. That's awesome. I'm going to just hit tab there. That'll get me to the end of that code. So my array. And I actually want to get 
the length and you can see it actually has IntelliSense on a lot of variables that might be added might be available for that object in this case it's an array I'll hit tab now that I'm at the end of my code just like the conditional breakpoint I hit return and that will add that expression so now you see I can actually add any expression that I want to evaluate in the watch expressions alright so my array length equals 5 and then as I said you can right click anywhere in the watch expressions to add a watch expression or to delete all watch expressions as well in this case I can add one more watch expression I'm kind of running out of ideas here uh, let's see just playing around with our array again let's say I want to know which item is the very first item in that array and we in an array zero is the very first item that zero index for arrays so if I hit return so the very first item in the array is Hank as you can see here it was the first added alright so that's uh, watch expressions I'm done with those so I can right click and delete all watch expressions now I have nothing no watches alright let's go back to our presentation deck scope variables kind of like watches uh, but they're only shown in the current scope let me go ahead and show you an example of that so I'm gonna keep all of my breakpoints that I have here on the on the side and here you see scope variables I'm gonna re actually refresh this page rerun the code and notice that we have these different variables now that I'm inside the function it actually recognizes my array here and it recognizes that there are functions inside of this scope so we're inside of this function it just pulls every local variable or function any object in that scope second function as well all of that so as I go through my code notice that when I jump into first function the scope is changed so now all I see is current person and and I see this which is basically um, you know just a reference to the, the function that's within uh, notice that if I that there is a closure option within the scope variables and that will actually go up and show you uh, parent level um, objects parent level uh, variables as well so it shows you my array the second function and the third function alright so that's pretty much the gist of scope variables um, it's just handy to kinda of see what's going on what things are being declared alright now a quick message from our sponsor if you ever get in any kind of trouble with uh, JavaScript debugging then just call Saul he'll help you get out of it and uh, you know we can move on from there alright let's talk about using the console first there's console.log and console.clear it actually surprised many people have uh, never heard of console.clear or not used it as much but uh, they go hand in hand and let me show you what those two do so here are my code the console this console.js file you'll see that right here I have a console.log and I've just put a string in there so what that does is it just logs out whatever whatever object whatever expression I make in this case this is just a basic string so if I go from sources over to my console tab here and I rerun that code you notice it hits that first log code starts and this is a common practice many people have done do this where you log each uh, major function of, call, of code every little function of every little block of code that you want to print out and make sure that things are still working maybe you want to print out an actual variable at a certain point in your code and that's that's very common so that's console.log very very simple now let me go to the code and you'll see here's my console.log code starts 
I jump into the first function, console.log first function called, and then the second function called, and so on. And you notice here in my code, I'm actually jumping from first function to third function, uh, so no even need for second function, I'll just delete that code out. Alright, so let's just say we log the first function and the third function, and and then we get into our fourth function. Well, we don't want to see any previous logs. We only want to see what happened on the fourth function. So the quick way to do that is just as I've commented out here, just for time, is console.clear. There's no parameter. You just call this clear method, and it'll just clear any logs that were uh, that were logged prior to that console.clear. Let me show you. And just to, to make this even more cl clear on the console.clear, um, let's see, I'm going to refresh the page. I want to put a breakpoint right before the console.clear so that you can see this. Alright, I hit the console.clear. I'm paused. Um, this is a, a good. Now, I can jump over here to this console and you can see the log code starts, first function, third function called. But it's hard to jump back and forth when I'm in the sources panel. So there's actually a quick way to pull up the the bottom console, and that is called the drawer. And you can click this this button right here to show the drawer. You can also just hit the escape key. Notice I'm not clicking anything. Just the escape key, and it will bring it up. If I show that drawer and look at the console, then now I can see the console log at the same time as my sources. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Still paused here on the console.clear. Notice I'm going to put a breakpoint. Actually, I don't even need a breakpoint. Remember, we can just step over. So I'm going to step over to the next line of code. The console was cleared. And now it shows that very next console log, fourth function called. So again, you can see how if you have 20, 50 logs, it gets ridiculous, and then something happens and you really want to see just that last bit of code or that last log, then you can use console.clear. All right. All right, now let's talk about the next option, and that is console.assert. Notice that console.assert takes an expression similar to a conditional breakpoint. So you can evaluate any uh, expression. Uh, and then the second parameter is any object. That could be a string that you want to print out. Like this is a, an error. Or you could say, I'm expecting this value. And you could you know get a value from an object to print that out. Let me show you what this means uh, or how to use this. Um, so, oh, I need to jump to my code real quick. So, so an example earlier, we had my array, and we had three items in the array. You see Hank, Jesse, and Walter. Now, what we want to do is we want to make an assertion, and um, a good way to remember it is you're making an assumption that a, that you're going to have a certain value. So, I'm going to assume, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a console.assert, and I'm going to assume that my array should always be greater than or equal to 1. In other words, it should at least have one name in it, one item uh, in the array. And if this, uh, if this condition is not met, if it's not greater than or equal to 1, or in other words, if that expression is false, then there will be a, an error thrown. So I'm going to say my array uh, length was not greater than 1. So that's the log message that I'll print out with that error. Now I'm going to run this code and you'll see that only if this is false, if my array is not greater than or equal than 1 in length, oh, 
and I have a rare, uh, problem there if my array dot length is not greater than or equal to one. Let's just break our code on purpose here. My array equals, and we'll do an empty array, which as we said, we should have at least one item. Now our array has no items, so this is going to become false, and we're going to see this assertion, this error thrown. And you can see there, now we have errors, just like any other normal errors that might be shown. And here in my log down here, you can see assertion failed. My array length was not greater than 1. That's what I printed out. Now, more useful than that is this can be any object, as, as we saw. We can say my array length was not greater than 1. it was and then we can actually add to this string just using the plus operator and then actually print out what the length was my array dot length rerun the code and you can see assertion failed my array length was not greater than one it was zero so again a good little handy tool raise your own custom errors to catch some of those things early on. Alright, console.table. This is a very handy tool for uh, many different things, but uh, the simplest, quickest way, and you can see other uh, options, is if you're looking at JSON data that you're loading on your page, uh, it's a quick way to see that data in a different way. Let me show you kind of the differences. So on this page, you see that I'm loading these names here. Uh, in this case, the uh, the fifth name, Valerie Sweeney, is highlighted. Uh, let me go to the code to show you how, how this is being loaded. And I scroll down. Here we go. We have a, a JSON call. Just getting a local, a local JSON file. And uh, in the debug tools, you can view JSON data. It's just harder to harder to see. Um, but you can see I'm just loading this JSON data and then appending it to a list container. Again, not critical information, but uh, just showing you how I'm actually appending all those uh, list items. Um, but if you want to see the JSON data that gets loaded, you can actually go to the network panel, click on XHR, and then click on the JSON data. So you see normally we'll have headers, preview, response. Response is actually all of that data that gets loaded. But you see this is very, very heavy, lots of nested objects, lots of complicated stuff. And maybe I only want a couple of fields out of this. Um, like maybe I want just the, the name or the email a few of these examples and I don't necessarily want to see every bit of, of data well that's the quick way to do that is I'm going to go to my console update my code and you see here we have a console.table and all I'm doing is you see that data represents that JSON data that was passed in so this data once it's returned I come down here, I just pass that data in, and then I ask it, I give it an array of whatever parameters that I want to log. Name, gender, and email. Again, there's a number of different ways that you can manipulate the data, um, but this is defining what the column names will be for that table. So now as I save this file, go back to my code. Here we go. So what prints out in the console is now a table. It actually gives us indexes for free of each item. And then you see the column names, name, gender, and email. And you saw there that you can actually sort it. Uh, it's actually a sortable table, so you get sortability for free. So again, a quick way to see your data. Um, nice handy tool, console.table. Let's see. Alright, multi-line commands in the console. 
In the console, you can actually do editing. You can do a number of edits, uh, like say, my var a equals one, and then hit return, and it, it's undefined. There's nothing that we're being returned, but now if I hit a and hit enter, it'll actually print out the value of that variable. So you actually are defining running JavaScript code in the console. So just like that, I can do var b var b equals a. So now var b is going to equal a, so now it should equal 1. I, hit, I run that code. I will print out b, what b equals, return, and there it is, 1 as well. Well, now I want to do, that gets kind of tedious, one line after another. Maybe I already know I want to run a couple, two or three lines of code, and I don't want to have to do that. So the quick way to do that is I want to do var c equals a plus b. And we know 1 plus 1, that's 2. But if I hold down shift and, and then hit return, holding down the shift key, hit return, it starts a new line without actually running that code. So C equals A plus B, that's 2. And now I'm going to actually add to that. I have C declared, so now I can just add to it. C equals C times 2. And now I'll read run that code and you can see it actually added var c equals a which is 1 plus 1 for b is 2 and then c equals c was 2 before times 2 and now it's 4 so again multi-line commands pretty awesome pretty nice quick way to to do some tests or, or run some code Snippets, very handy. Didn't know about snippets for a while. Uh, I, I hate the number of years that I continue to have to Google everything, and if I'd have known about snippets in the console, it would have saved me some time. But now I know, and I'm sharing it with you. So, to get the snippets, you go to the Sources panel. And if I bring this out, you can see normally you have Sources, there's Content Scripts. Not going to talk about that in this discussion but there's actually a snippets tab and you see that I have some existing snippets and if I click on one you can see console.log breaking bad now to see some of these in the log um, then I'm gonna actually most of these I've, I've done console.logs now it could be any JavaScript that you want to run it doesn't have to be just a console command but in the examples I have that so I'm gonna bring up the drawer which we can bring up this way or again hitting escape and then after I have that snippet up if I right click it and click run you see that it's logged breaking bad just ran this command close that snippet uh, an example of a styled console log, yes, you can actually use CSS styles to, cons to style your console logs. The perfect example for me, sometimes I forget this, but again, it's percentage %c. If you add percentage %c in front of any, um, any string, anything that you want to log, it will give you a style. Anything from that C on will get this style. And you can see I'm doing color white, much like CSS. The text color will be white. The background will be red. If I run this log, you can see now error, white text, red background. Great way to really stand out some logs that are, that are errors or major problems uh, in your code. And again, a lot of the common ones that I forget is how do I get what jQuery version I'm running? Um, I'm going to clear the log here. But if you want to get what jQuery version, you know, there's the code right here. And I can actually run that command as well. So it's a very a great way to run some code that you may not remember offhand. Or, you know, you don't want to dedicate your, your memory to those things. Just uh, save a snippet and you can rerun it at any time. And this is saved uh, in your, in Chrome, in the browser. Uh, it stays there forever you, until you delete it. So, um you won't lose these snippets after you close Chrome. And uh, anyway, that's uh, snippets. Live editing, a uh, number of different ways that you can live edit uh, using the console. So first I'm going to show you the elements 
So as you're in the console, you can actually manipulate the DOM, the document object model, um, by just uh, a number of different ways. I can select an item. You can see that I can change the highlight color. Let's say, well, I want to really want to see what that highlight uh, looks like in yellow. There you go. Oh, but that highlight doesn't look good. Let me see. If I have a yellow, then I guess the color should be black. And you can change these these things. And then, oh, maybe I want the highlight color. I want the font. And you can it gives you some type of heads. You can actually arrow down, pick the, the one you want. I'm now going to hit tab. You hit tab, and it will take you to the, the attribute, uh, or the value for the attribute. And I'm going to type bold. So anyway, you can manipulate the DOM that way. You can also not only uh, style things dynamically, uh, you can also actually drag an item in the DOM and move it around. I'm dragging this LI to the top. And you can see now I've just moved the order and changed the DOM. Um, so again, it's pretty cool how you can manipulate the DOM. Uh, this magnifying will actually allow you to select an element and inspect it. And it will highlight those items. If I actually click on the item now, then it will jump to it in the, in the elements panel. And then I could play with it and style it that way. So that's one quick way for um, doing live editing. But on top of that, in JavaScript world, we may want to do some uh, live edits to our JavaScript. I'm going to go to the JavaScript file, console.js. And I'm going to go into the code, set up a breakpoint, my new var equals 5. You can see here I can set up a watch expression for my new var. I'm going to add it to the watch. My new var is undefined. I'm going to go run it to the next page. All right, so my new var is 5 now. I'm going to bring up the console, dot, console drawer. And now that I'm in that line of code, I can do this a number of different ways, but even in the console, I can change that value. My new var equals 10. Run that code, and now it prints out 10. So as I continue on, as I run the execute the very next line of code, you can see that my new var changed to 10. Other things you can do is not only the live edits and actually coding in the console, I can actually manipulate this code. I can actually edit it on the fly and say, well, I don't want this console to assert in here anymore. I know that's just debug code, and I want it to go away now. So I can actually select that line and delete it. I actually deleted that line of code. I'm going to delete that my array. And notice here at the top I have an asterisk, uh, much like many other IDEs. The asterisk says that it's been changed. So I can save that file. Um, I can right click anywhere in the JS file and then choose save or save as if I want to save it as some other hotfix file or some other. But I'm going to just rewrite over my local file so that local file if I hit save well then it'll ask me to where to save it I'm going to go to where my files are in the presentations the debugging in my app folder and then in my JS folder and you see I have console.js here if I click save I'm going to replace the existing and notice now that the color has changed to a light brown indicating that this file has now been changed from the original that was loaded on the page. If I run through this code and refresh, notice now I do not have that console.assert. I don't have the my array running. Everything is now saved and, and running a new file. So it's a good, a good quick way to edit your existing file. All right, uh, another best practice. Uh, do not minify your code on development because you, you always um, would like to see uh, meaningful code. Uh, just like jQuery minified or other libraries, you don't want to see function A, B, Z. You'd actually like, like to see that it's um, a meaningful uh, descriptive function uh, so that's understandable what's going on with your code as you debug it. So don't minify your code. All right, one last thing to discuss is the call stack. 
and to think of the call stack, it is bottoms up. So something that's executed first is going to be on the bottom of the stack. And uh, let me just show you that. Let me skip to our call stack file. All right, we have it loaded here. Now, again, our same sample code, first function, second function, third function, fourth function. So the quick thing to know is the call stack is each function call. Call stacks only, they don't show you every variable that's, that's in scope, like scope variables. They will only show you what functions have been called. So if I set a breakpoint on first function, and as we did before, we did all these console logs and make sure our code's working well. We, know, we just want to know, does it get to the very end? So I'm going to step into the fourth function and set a breakpoint as I run my code. You'll see I hit the first function. I've hit anonymous function, and that's really just the intro into this function call. And as I hit play, notice that it went through the first function call, the second function, and, as, and if I want to actually see where that code was executed, I can click an item on the call stack. I click first function, it takes me right to that call. Click on second function, it takes me to that call the call that was made from that function you see so it's making a third function call and then third function what call was made there is now calling fourth function and then now fourth function inside there so again it's a great way to see the quick function calls the the major stack calls uh, throughout your code alright another thing is you know we can all admit to it no matter how long we've been coding uh, sometimes we just we write crappy code and we have written crappy code and but there's a way to avoid that we need to clean up our code you know I, I've I've uh, had some bad uh, practices in the past and uh, some tools are out there to help fix that so let's talk about debugging tools alright let me talk about rolling your own debugging tools the basic principle was to create something really quickly. It doesn't cost you many uh, much time to create, but it, it gives you a lot of custom logging uh, as well as running your app in a different mode that will give you a, a sanity check on memory leaks and, and other things. Let me show you a quick example. Here's a, a quick prize game, prize wheel game. I, I click through it. It has all of the screens that the app would have. As I step through it, I'm going to spin the game once. This will run in the default mode. And I know that I'm not going to win the first time, even though that was pretty close. This game is actually rigged, so I know that on the second time, I'm actually going to win. So I've changed the code to do that. So on the very second spin, I will win the grand prize. Just barely. I win an iPad Mini, so good for me. I play it again. Now that prize will never be won again um, during this time period. So again, it looks close, but no grand prize. Now let me show you how I can change that and add some custom debug tools. So here's the file. There's a config file, config object here. Uh, I have debug mode equals false. I can change that debug mode to true. I can also change the spin duration of the prize wheel. Six seconds looks natural to the audio, but I'm going to change it to 100 milliseconds. It's a very quick spin. The and then also in this debug mode, it's going to change a number of things. It's going to change the prize wheel and actually have a different image that has the prize wheel numbers. And let me go ahead and just show you make more sense so as I refresh the page it's loaded in debug mode now I've also added numbers to the prize wheel <clears throat> and uh, and then also there's a console log div so I kinda rolled my own console log and this is handy for a client handoff or some or when you just don't want to be in the debug tools you have a quick visual while the apps running without anything getting in the way um, and I just put this in an area that didn't matter as far as you know, we can see the prize wheel. So if I click spin, it's going to log that. I did not win this time. 
But now that I've refreshed a page, even though I'm in debug mode, uh, you notice that the very next one, and I did a custom style on the grand prize so it stands out, that I won the grand prize the second time. I'm going to enable auto spin. And now I just want to let this run for an hour. So I want to make sure that there's no breaking of code and the app's not going to, uh, you know, just bail out on me on memory. And it's just going to continue to run, 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 run. So again, a quick way to debug this app make sure that there aren't any problems. So I've just kind of created my own little console log. And you guys can do the same thing. I may do a separate tutorial on how I did this, um, but it's really just a, a div block with you know an overflow set on it. Um, but if that's not clear to, to you, then uh, I'll definitely look at maybe doing a more full-featured uh, video on that. All right, just say water span. It's going to stop. We're done. Anyway, so you can go back to this log, all that's wonderful stuff. So again, roll your own debug tool. But there are other debugging tools, or pre-debugging tools, I call them. Uh, and uh, a no side note is these will want you to use strict in your JavaScript. I'll show you that in just a moment. So the tools are JSHint and JSLint. They'll actually verify your code and let you know of any inherent problems that could cause errors in your in your JavaScript. JSN is more lenient than JSLint. JSLint being the original, more strict mode. JSN um, is supported by a number of different apps, uh, including uh, Sublime Text. And I'm going to go in there and show you. So in Sublime Text, I'm going to open a different file here. Let's get out of samples. And let's load up call stack. So notice uh, I have use strict statement here. What that does is it it makes the browser use uh, strict mode so that it doesn't allow uh, sloppy JavaScript code, things that could break um, things that could break your code or bad practices. One example of this is uh, not declaring a variable, just setting a equals one without using the var before it. So if I save this and I'm going to go to the call stack, let's go back to my browser, look at the console, refresh, and you see that actually I'm getting an error now, uncaught, reference error A is not defined. If I go back to my code and I, I do not use strict inside this function, I have A equals 1. I refresh the page. It didn't print out an error at all. It actually allowed it. So by using strict mode, it'll actually catch a number of things for you in and of itself. But before the before having to go to the browser, even in my code editor, um, you can load tools in, in Sublime Text. Many other editors have have uh, these plugins for it. But I can load JS Hint in Sublime Text, and if I lint my code it'll actually show me that error. A is not defined right here. Same as the browser. If I do var before it, and I can right click and, and use JSN as well, length the code, and again most of the time I use the shortcut, and length the code, no errors, nothing pops up, and I didn't even have to save my file. Now I'll save my file, I'm using strict, you know, the browser works. So the quick premise is use strict on your JavaScript to help you catch errors, even in the browser. It'll catch errors for you that you may not if you don't have JS Hint. But the other thing is to definitely go ahead and get JS Hint. It's a great tool to help catch a number of bad practices. All right, and then uh, if you're not happy with JS Hint, it's sometimes very strict on on some of the errors it spits back. Things that you go, I know my code's good. I, I don't want to hear all these errors. Um, well you can just customize it with an actual config file. I'm not going to go into details here. I could do a full featured uh, JS Hint tutorial later. But you can configure it to not give you certain errors. Alright, the screen that you just got a sneak peek of is the resources. Uh, and if you have any questions, then definitely um, hit me up on Twitter. Um, there's the Chrome DevTools here in this link. Uh, a number of great resources, their tips and tricks, um, 
jQuery Learning Center is an awesome place to learn all things JavaScript. Uh, not on this list uh, is Mozilla. If you go to MDN, the Mozilla Developer Network, uh, another great resource. Um, here's a link to Crockford's site, JavaScript to Good Parts, and you could pick up that book. Again, a great, great, great read. And then design patterns in JavaScript, some object-oriented, different ways to um, create your stuff. Just, uh, just go to Adi uh, Asmani's uh, website. He has a lot of great information. And then you can find my slides here. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll try to do more tutorials, maybe not as long. I know this is a lot of information. Um, if you're still here, then I appreciate you sticking around and uh, uh, look forward to sharing more with you. So that's all, folks. The uh, slides are there, and I appreciate you staying tuned. Until next time.